President Biden's border policies are a disgrace. This crisis is despicable. She embarrassed herself, she embarrassed the Republicans, and she embarrassed women. Did you mean to give the impression that this horrible story happened on President Biden's watch? Freshman Alabama Senator Katie Britt is facing a ton of backlash and allegations of dishonesty over her response to President Joe Biden's State of the Union address just last week. Now, she was even forced to defend herself during a contentious interview on Fox News. We're gonna get to that in just a moment and you don't wanna miss it. But before we do, uh, more on the portion of her speech uh, that is getting all of this negative attention. Now, Brit's State of the Union response included some fear mongering, uh, some fear mongering tactics about Joe Biden's presidency and what he has failed to do in keeping the country safe uh, with the southern border being wide open. You know, that was the main point that she wanted to outline. Uh, she wanted to make it seem as though there's a looming threat of rape and sex trafficking because the border is out of control. And so she shared a very specific story while trying to make this point about a woman who she met at the southern border named Carla Jacinto. So here is the portion of the speech where she addresses her story. I traveled to the Del Rio sector of Texas. That's where I spoke to a woman who shared her story with me. She had been sex trafficked by the cartels starting at the age of 12. The cartels put her on a mattress in a shoebox of a room. And they sent men through that door over and over again for hours and hours on end. What are we doing? Like, look, the, what she's sharing is obviously very serious, although she doesn't get the facts right, and I'll tell you why and how in just a moment. But. The delivery, like what? What are we? What are we doing? Yeah, you know, look, I, I'm of two minds on that. So, especially that part that you just saw. So, obviously, over the top BS, emotional, right? You could be moved by that story, and I hope that you are moved by that story. The core of that story is true. It's not. It just doesn't happen to be about Biden's term, but, but. She's obviously an enormous phony pretending to get all emotional and as she rehearsed that many times. But I have to confess that I'm a little surprised that she's getting so much heat for that because politicians have been giant phonies just like her my entire life. You're right about that, you're totally right about that. But her delivery, it like slaps you across the face with how inauthentic she is and how she is exploiting a tragic event for political advantages. Yeah, you that's know, what really because what happened was awful and brutal and tragic, right? It's the fact that that story is being utilized as a tool for the right wing politically speaking, and you can't help but acknowledge the fact that it's being exploited as a political tool because of her inauthentic delivery. Yeah, but yeah, there's I find a silver lining in this story. You might be surprised by that. So first, look, don't get me wrong, I did a play by play here for our members. And if you sign up for membership, you could actually still watch it. And I have to confess it was a bit hilarious, right? Because I started playing along with her because she was so over the top, no, right? Super over the top. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, we couldn't put that up online, but we uh, for on YouTube, etc. But it is for our members, so tyt.com slash join, and you could watch that now. So believe me, you'll watch that and you'll say, oh, I get it. I get that she was over the top and yeah. absurd, etc. But having said that, I swear to you that politicians my whole life, if they haven't been quite that degree, They've been really close to that fake, mm. right? And so I think what the difference is here, and I'm going to give the most ironic credit to the right wing here, because a lot of right wingers called her out afterwards and they're like, she looked like a total phony. And that is not what would have happened in previous years. That's true. There is an actual populist wing of the Republican Party. And yes, they believe a lot of things that are totally wrong, right? But they are calling out their corporate politicians and they are beginning to call out some of their phony politicians. Right. So I think what really did her in was all of a sudden there appeared to be bipartisan agreement about what a phony she is. That's true. A lot of mainstream media don't give you honest news. We do, you know why? Because of you. Paid membership on YouTube makes all the difference. Hit the join button below and you become the hero that sustains us. And there was backlash from 
you know, I saw from Republican voters online, but more importantly, from members of the conservative press. So, you know, Megyn Kelly came out and said it was embarrassing. But for the purposes of this discussion, I want to focus on the anecdote that she shared, that tragic story that she shared in her State of the Union response, right? The one about Carla Yacinto. And um, turns out that CNN is actually very familiar with Carla and her story. Uh, turns out that Britt got many things wrong as she was relaying information about that horrific ordeal. And so with that in mind, let's take a look at what I'm referring to. Carla Jacinto also told me that Senator Britt got many of the facts of her story wrong. First of all, Jacinto says that one, she was not trafficked by Mexican drug cartels, but by a pimp that operated as part of a family that entrapped vulnerable girls in order to force them into prostitution. Two, she also said that she was never trafficked in the United States, as Senator Britt appeared to suggest. Three, she was kept in captivity from 2004 to 2008, when President George W. Bush, a Republican, was in office as opposed to the current administration, as the senator implied. And four, she met the senator at an event at the border with other government officials and anti-human trafficking activists instead of one-on-one. -on -one. CNN has confirmed much of what Jacinto has said in prior reporting, and her story hasn't changed since we first spoke. Jacinto told me no one reached out to her to ask for her permission to use her story as part of a political speech. Someone using my story and distorting it for political purposes. She she told me it's not fair at all. So the very victim that Britt was referring to in that story feels like she has been victimized again with her horrible, horrific, you know, tragic incident being used as a political tool. And then I want to go to one more video because it's important to hear from Yacinto herself. She also spoke to CNN, gave an interview about her thoughts, but more importantly, gave a broader perspective on on how these types of situations get exploited for politics. Let's watch. At one point when I met you years and years ago, you told me that you felt like at the beginning, Mexican politicians had taken advantage of you by using your story for political purposes. Do you feel like that happened once again? here in the United States? Yes, in fact, I hardly ever cooperate with politicians because it seems to me that they only want an image. They only want a photo and that to me is not fair. I work as a spokesperson for many victims who have no voice and I really would like them to be empathetic. All the governors, all the senators to be empathetic with the issue of human trafficking because there are millions of girls and boys who disappear all the time. People who are really trafficked and abused as she mentioned. And I think she should first take into account what really happens before telling a story of that magnitude. I mean, this woman's a total class act. I mean, she's resilient. She's fighting for other women and other people who have been victimized, similar to how she was victimized. But more importantly, she took this awful situation and this awful exploitation of her story for political, you know, for a political tool and has used it to kind of amplify the work that she's doing and make a broader point about how it's important to actually hear people like her out instead of just use people like her for politics. Yeah, and guys, don't get caught up in the both sides of them too. Meaning like just because Brit mangled that story and and pretended it was under Biden's term when it wasn't, doesn't mean that rape of migrant women and sometimes men isn't a horrific problem because yes, it is. Exactly. It is a massive problem. And it is okay. happening. And yeah. it happens to a gigantic percentage of women who are, who are coming to this country to the point that it's shocking. And, and I don't know what to do about it. I wish someone actually cared about it so they would try to address the problem. But she's right, uh, politicians on either side haven't done a single thing about the substance of it. They just both keep using it for their own political talking points while never actually fixing it. I mean, it. it reminds me of the opioid crisis and the fentanyl crisis here in the United States. We hear a lot about it from our politicians on both sides of the political aisle when they're campaigning. Once the elections are over, we don't hear anything from them about it. And we just hear news stories about the number of overdose deaths increasing for another year in a row. But getting back to Brit, so 
Obviously, there was um, some dishonesty in the way that she shared that story, making viewers think that this uh, horrible incident happened recently under Biden's watch, but it happened under George W. Bush's watch. And so she was asked about that, shockingly, on Fox News. So I give them credit for asking her this question. Let's take a look at how she responded. Nobody is questioning that the story happened, that she is actually who she is, says she is, and, and that this happened. The question is about the timing and the implication of you telling the story. Did you mean to give the impression that this horrible story happened on President Biden's watch? No, Shannon, look, I very specifically said this is what President Biden did during his first 100 days. Minutes after coming into office, he stopped all deportations, he halted construction of the border wall, and he said, I am going to give amnesty to millions. Those types of things act as a magnet to have more and more people here. The truth is, and the media knows this, yet they're not covering it, that human trafficking has gone up under President President Biden. Okay, but, but to be clear, the story that you relate is not something that's happened under the Biden administration, that particular person. Um, well, I very, I very clearly said I spoke to a woman who told me about when she was trafficked when she was 12. So I didn't say uh, a teenager, I didn't say a young woman, a, a grown woman, a woman when she was trafficked when she was 12. So what do you think about Jen, that, Jenk? Do you think that was a Look, do you think that she intended to mislead viewers into thinking that this happened under Biden's watch? Or do you think that you know, she yeah. maybe didn't word it well, but it, there was no ill intent there? I think she definitely meant to mislead, <laughs> okay? Uh, but like, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so let me explain both sides of it. So number one, when uh, I watched that whole segment on Fox News and uh, the first time that she was asked a question, she went on for about two minutes and never answered. It's an easy question. Did you intend to mislead or did you not intend to mislead? Do you con concede that it didn't happen under Biden? These are super easy questions. And she went on for two minutes about Biden, right? Yeah. About how bad Biden is. So further yeah. misleading, right? So, and then, uh, and you saw it in that portion of the tape too. She continued to lie. She said, uh, Biden told all of the millions of undocumented immigrants that they could get amnesty. No, he didn't, he never said that. You can criticize Biden's, in fact, there's massive, ample criticism of Biden's policies in immigration. Absolutely. We, and we do have record numbers. Absolutely. And Biden didn't have any real policy of his own. He's now trying to copy Trump's policy in a desperate kind of pathetic attempt. So you see us being honest about the results, about the reality, etc. So you don't have to go to these lies and deceit, etc. Yeah, but exactly. But she can't help herself. So she pretends that Biden told them, yeah, come on in, I'm gonna give you amnesty. He never even came close to saying that. You could say his actions might have led there, etc., but no need to lie. And in this case, she could have easily couched it as, look, I heard this horrific story from a while ago, but it's still happening today, and then tell the story. These are really easy things to do that doesn't take away from the power of the story. But I think that she thought, and this is another interesting like not silver lining is kind of a tough word for it, but like she thought, oh, Republicans can lie ad nauseum, we're, or politicians can lie ad nauseum. We're never gonna get called out on it, and we're certainly not gonna get called out from our side. Look at Donald Trump, right? No, Trump has special different rules. And so I say it's a tad bit of a silver lining because the right wing is not allowing other Republican politicians to lie quite as much as they allow Trump to lie. True. Do you see what I'm saying? True, but even that, Jenk, I feel like is a relatively new trend. Like yeah. to see conservative outlets pushing back on other conservatives is relatively new. It is and, new. And I appreciate it. I'm I like encouraged it. by it. Me too, absolutely. Yeah. And you're totally right about how, in terms of Biden's immigration policy or lack thereof, he is a target rich environment, and there really is no need to lie about what he has and hasn't done because we already see what the, you know, lack of border policy has manifested into, especially when you look at what's happening in some of the uh, liberal cities that have seen an influx of migrants come to their cities when they don't have the resources to adequately respond to it. So, I mean, again, you don't have to make up anything, just focus on what Biden has fallen short on. But apparently that's not enough in their minds, I don't get it, it's it, weird. But you know, again, like Katie Britt, 100% wrong, clear 
She's con con obviously lying and a phony, all that. I can, like, I'm happy to point that out. <laughs> I pointed it out then, I'm pointing it out now. But guys, also, my whole life, I see both sides coming in and going, oh, the numbers are terrible for them. The numbers are terrible. Like, for example, Obama's immigration numbers, very similar to Trump's and very similar to the first couple of years of Biden. But meanwhile, if you listen to Trump and the Republicans, oh, it was a disaster under Obama. It was perfect under Trump and no one came in. And then oh, it was a disaster under Biden. If you listen to Democrats, oh, Trump was terrible, oh, right, etc. No, the numbers were very similar through Obama, Trump, and Biden. And in the last year, it has spiked considerably. Obama was referred to as the deporter in chief because of how quickly he would deport people. Right. Yeah. So yeah, and that's the thing that's so frustrating because I don't know about you, Jenk, but once I realize that a figure or a media outlet or whatever has lied or they've been dishonest, that's it. I, I'm not gonna trust them ever again, even when they are saying things or sharing information that it might actually be accurate. You get what I'm saying? 100%. So like, stop hurting yourself by spreading lies because some people who might have an open mind might actually hear out what you're saying are no longer gonna trust anything you have to say. Yeah, so at the risk of hurting people's feelings here, let me say it about both sides. Yes, the Republicans are definitely worse, sorry if that hurts your feelings. But they have been, they play fast and loose with the numbers all the time. And they're trying to create a panic in this particular Issue, and they've been trying to do it for the last 20 years because they know that their base does not like a changing country. So this is an issue that they dig in on, right? So they will say all the time, oh, it was terrible under Obama. It was horrific under Biden the minute he stepped in office. But brother, it's identical numbers to Trump, right? So please stop lying. You could say it's a real problem under Trump and Obama and Biden, and that is super fair, right? But when you start saying crazy lies that aren't backed up by the evidence at all. Now, on the, you lose all credibility. And if you're wondering why nobody believes MAGA, it's because of things like that, right? On the other hand, when you have AOC saying that there is no migrant problem, but sister, we can see the numbers. Yeah. And the numbers have spiked. When you deny objective reality, you lose all credibility. And I don't care what side you're on. Totally. We have to stick with facts and truth and reality. To, because we plan on doing things that the politicians never do, which is trying to actually solve these problems. Right, and you can't solve the problem if you can't agree on what the facts of the issue happen to be.